All right, guys, Fed Chairman Powell has come out and he said, expect high rates to continue for quite a while. Last week, the Fed did not raise rates, which the market was overwhelmingly expecting him to keep rates the same. And he, he did that. But remember, core inflation is still higher than their goal of 2%. He's been saying 2% for a long time. Remember what core inflation is. Core inflation is the CPI data less food and energy. Food and energy are very, very volatile. If you saw in past months, food and energy dropped a lot, so it made CPI go down, even though core inflation was up. Now, just today, the Schiller Index came out, and through July, home prices are back up in the positive of one year over the, over the year mark after dropping, and we're seeing a big jump in, in, uh, in housing prices. Housing prices and rent and things like that are a 40% factor of inflation in CPI. So there's still a lot of issues there when it comes to inflation, according to the Fed. Guys, expect rates to stay high for a while. That's the norm. For those of you who graduated after 2003, three or 4% interest rates are not the norm for housing. It's more around six, seven, eight percent rates. Okay, in the early 80s, there were 15 to 18% interest rates. It's just gonna take some getting used to. That's all it's gonna be. And if you look right now, just a year and a half, two years ago, 90-day treasuries paid essentially 0%. Now they're paying 5.5% per year. The 10-year treasury just eclipsed the 4.5% mark. To put it in perspective, going back to 1871, the average 10-year treasury was 4.4%. So we're basically there right now. Now, obviously, it's an average. There's highs and lows, et cetera. But the 10-year treasury is at 4.5%. The 90-day treasury is at 5.5% you can expect rates to stay high for a while. Now, could that change? Sure, if we have some recession, some economic disaster, I imagine the government will shift at some point and they might do a temporary drop in rates. But don't expect, I, you know, I've heard it from so many friends of mine who are young, who are buying houses now going, you know, I have to move out of my house and I know rates are seven or 8%, but I'll just refinance when they go back to four or 5%. And I go, it could happen, but just don't expect it to happen. Expect that your income is going to go higher because you're young and you have the, it's a, it's a, it's a diminishing return. It's a very quick graph like this. Your, your income is going to go grow much faster, very quickly. And in the future, you'll be able to afford a more expensive house with a higher interest rate. That's just natural. But to expect that to happen here in the next year or two, it could, I have no idea what's going to happen, but it's not like what we're experiencing right now is some major early 1980s interest rates. No, it's not. Inflation is coming down, core inflation is coming down, but Fed Chairman Powell has been very, very clear that he still thinks there's more to come. He still thinks there's more work to be done. And when he was on that Senate co committee and the House committee, and, the, and those people were saying to him, you're going to cost jobs, his comment was, inflation hurts 100 million families. Losing jobs hurts two or three million families at a time. Inflation hurts everybody. And that was his point. And it was a valid point. I like the fact that he stood up to it. I like what Fed Chairman Powell is saying and doing. He's sticking by his guns. Unlike what he did when Trump was in office and he wavered completely Trump and started, you know, cutting rates even more. And granted, COVID helped the whole idea of cutting rates to zero. But guys, when rates are zero and you can't make any money on your investments, that's how bubbles occur. That's how it happens. When you're making 0% in your, in your bank account, you're going to go to the stock market. What happens to the stock prices? They sky, they sky high. They go sky high to levels that are not supported. And that's where we're sitting at right now. Now, the S&P is at 4,273, which is a little bit below where it was when rates were first zero back in March of last year, 2022. But guys, valuations are still very, very high. Fed Chairman Powell's job is not to keep the stock market up. His job is to keep unemployment at full employment, which is around 55 6%. And we're at 3.8, so he's got some work to do. He actually wants higher unemployment. Why? Low unemployment, employers are really scrambling for more jobs. They have to pay more money to employees, and it raises the cost of goods. You know, it's so funny to me. There's a United Auto Workers strike going on right now, and everybody's like, come on, give the workers more money. I'm like, listen, more power to anybody who gets more money. I will never criticize that. But what I don't like is those same people will then complain, why can't I afford a car? Well, guys, you can't have an auto worker making $300,000 a year and have a cheap car. It's one or the other. Goods and services are done by people who are paid a salary. Pay everybody $10 million a year. Guess what's going to happen? The average home price is going to become $40 million. And I'm going to go right down the list of all the things that will go up. You're not going to be richer. You're going to make more dollars, but you're not going to be richer. You're still going to be able to, if a tub of 
of pens. Let's say this pen I buy for $1.50 and the actual cost is 50 cents and 30 cents of its labor. Let's pay everybody 10 times more. Now the labor cost is three bucks. What happens to the cost of this pen? It goes to six, seven dollars. That's it. Now that same person making three bucks to make this pen is now paying seven dollars for a pen that he could have bought for a dollar fifty. That's inflation. That's where the cost of of the goods and services, the labor costs, drive up costs. It's not a real, I don't, I always find it funny when people say, oh, we must pay a fair wage. It's like, okay, pay $30 an hour. I'm fine with that. Pay $100 an hour. I'm fine with that. Guess what's going to happen? Everything in the world that you buy is going to go sky high in price. And then you're going to say, why don't I make enough money? Inflation sucks because of this. And that's why it's important to understand the cause and effect of when you pay people more money. It absolutely does have an effect, and Powell knows this. Janet Yellen should know this, even though she acts like she doesn't understand it. Some of the things she says, I'm like, what is she talking about? What is she talking? Bernanke, I don't think, he claimed to understand it, but he was dealing with the Great Depression potential kind of fear. But look at it saying, guys, we're, he doesn't want inflation. Fed Chairman Powell doesn't want inflation. When inflation was 10% last year, people were upset. Guys, I'll tell you right now, when I go to McDonald's and I order on the kiosk, that's what we call $15 an hour in labor is a kiosk. Keep doing it. Get $30 an hour. They're going to keep fighting inflation with higher rates that make it harder. A friend of mine owns a dealership in St. Louis. I texted him the other day. If I have a 740 credit score, what's my rate on a, on a, on a new car? He said 7 to 8%. I just went, unbelievable. I'm not, I mean, I'm not in the market for buying a new car or financing it, but the point is, Seven or eight percent if you have a 740 credit score. I go, what if you have 640? He said 12 or 13. He goes, but if you have a good story for that 12 or 13, I might be able to get the bank to give you 10 or 11. I was like, wow. Okay. Doesn't make a home mortgage of seven or eight percent too bad anymore, does it? I don't know where the future holds for interest rates. All I'm going off of based on what Fed Chairman Powell says, and just trying to tell you guys, guys, but if you save appropriately, if you save 15, 20% of your income, if you don't overspend and buy useless stuff, you'll be fine. You might have to cut back here and there, but you'll be fine. And that's what's important here. And if you want to buy a new home, you might have to wait a little bit longer. If you have a great mortgage on your current home, wait until you absolutely have to move. The good news is home prices are going back up because inflation's up. And supply levels are down on homes. And when supply is down, it drives up prices. More people are chasing fewer homes. Guys, if you like this, all I have to ask you to do, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your time.